Yo, I got a good one for y'all today. So y'all take a seat and let's watch this one. This is by a guy named Drew Hernandez. And the name of his group is Our Boy Drew and the Hustle Standard. Now, some of y'all might have heard of him. Some of y'all probably haven't. A lot of y'all probably haven't. He's not huge, but he is not small either. Now, I found this guy a few years ago. I've liked his music. And I come across this a little while ago and figured that I would share it with y'all because I enjoy it. Now, this guy speaks on a lot of topics that veterans deal with, especially post-service. And he pretty much hits home with most of it. So definitely worth a watch. So let's get into it. I can announce that over the next year, another 34,000 American troops will come home from Afghanistan. This drawdown will continue, me. and by the end of next year, our it. war in Afghanistan will be over. Call your congressman, ask him about a shelter. They won't know where Never the man is. They spent a fortune to train me to shoot a rifle, but anyway. they can't afford a headache. Tell them we got a problem, too many returning sick. Who are you talking about? Veterans. That's right. They're just... If you're a retiree or you're a veteran and you're not active duty, yeah. just die as quick as you can. Do us all a favor, just die as quick as you can. I get messages asking me for some help. They sick and tired, life is a living hell. The VA keeps handing out pills and handing out. Well, that's, that's, that's me right there. That's me right there, waking up at stupid retarded times in the morning. And, like, for what reason? This dude waking up at 3.45 in the morning to do what? I'll be waking up at 4.30 in the morning. No alarm clock. I'll be awake. I'm like, all right, I'm awake now. And then I can't go back to sleep. Addiction to make it hard to get refills. Oh, and to add to what he said, the, the whole, let's, let's give these guys some pills for their mental health problems. Now they're addicted to whatever, you know, opiates and whatnot that's in there. That's a reality that, uh, that a lot of people don't really know about. It's sad. Best way to deal with some of this stuff is to find an outlet. Find something that will occupy your mind, like a, a hobby or something like that. Help, help somebody. That's what I do. I help people. I try. At least I try to. Anyway. They said I was disconnected. They said I'm trouble. They blamed it on my depression. I'm trying to find a purpose because I'm feeling worthless. I feel lost in this direction. I wish I could have stayed in and done a whole 20. Made a career out of it. Because, uh, I mean, it was really the only thing that I knew, and I was good at it. I'm not dysfunctional. I'm disregarded. So pardon if somehow I seem to act heartless. I'm a, a lot of veterans do act heartless, by the way. Because they're... And it's not because they're trying to be that way. They're trained to be that way because they're trained... They're trained to separate their emotions from their from their actions. And their decision making skills. And because of that, it seems like they're very heartless in some things that they do and they in the things that they make decisions on because of that. So a little tip of information for those of you that did not know that. Long fuck, I feel like I'm a target. So who do I turn to? This wasn't part of the bargain. No, this is my life. This is my pain. And while I got a breath of me, friends are sleeping in graves. And all I got left are pictures I haven't even framed. So if you ask if I changed, I'll tell you I'm not the same. There's no need for for us to kill ourselves at home when they couldn't kill us while we were at war. I feel like people don't understand me. He who shed blood is he who becomes family. 22 die a day, that's 22 tragedies. And I'ma stay worried, this is something still happening. Whoa, it's the truth, I lost some friends up in this battle. If I lose another, I'ma flip, like nothing matters. I've lost a lot of friends over the last, I've lost a lot of friends over the last five years. Like about seven now that have killed themselves 
because of the demons that they were dealing with. There was a couple of them that I talked to not two days before they did it. And it's, it's, it sucks because you just, you don't know. And a lot of times it just seems, especially the last couple of ones, it just seems like they, they weren't reaching out to talk. It's like they were saying their goodbyes, even though they didn't say goodbye. It's, it's weird. You've been to war though, came back from a war zone. But I got bones in the closet, I want to keep the doors closed. Don't forget I'm only human. The few that knows me knows what I've been through, so they help me battle my own illusions. That's why we're strong together, when we bond together. So if you go to war, I go to war, up and arms forever. Yeah. I've always told any any of my battle buddies, you know, anybody that I've come across that that I, for instance, I'm part of Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. All of my brothers and sisters that are in that association know my phone is always on and they can call me day or night, period. Everybody that has... Everybody that comes across my channel here and anybody that has come across any of my other social media, I may not give you my phone number openly, but I will always be there to talk to you if you need me. And if I have to give you my phone number so I can talk to you, by God, I'll do it. Because I don't want to lose another brother. Not like that. So let's talk about PTSD. Let's talk about depression. Let's talk about suicide. I understand it. I put that pistol in my mouth. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to be helpless, to feel alone, no purpose. But that's not a reason to quit. That's just more of a reason to keep going. That's more of a reason to get up. So get up. You understand? The vision isn't clear. The air is... Okay, so that lady's been in this, this like two or three times now. And it seems like... A, she she does not care anything about that pistol nor does she look like she has any clue what's going on with it it's cloudy laid out in gold bricks the pants shall not be the truth is the world will go on without me when i fight like i'm down i dare you to tell me i hold back never i feel like i'm dying if i'm not getting better the stress on my head is beginning to concern me i told you the truth but nobody heard me. We go up and down the mountain top. So kingdom comes and we won't stop. All right, so <laughs> I saw the sunset, the, that sunset, and I'm gonna, I want to be the one to say it. Iraq and Afghanistan has some of the craziest, best looking sunsets you'll ever see anywhere, and it's only because of all the dust that's flying around in the air. <laughs> it's crazy. Kingdom comes and we won't stop. Clowns, they, you gotta breathe. 
This is important because life, life after the military, there's a lot of times the majority of veterans, especially those who really took their service to heart, this is how they still view themselves years, years after they've been out. Like they still have that mentality within them and that's still how they view themselves. Hey, there's a lot of things that veterans deal with on a daily basis that it's, it's hard to really, it's hard, it's hard to really cover all of it because there's so many different things and every single veteran situation is slightly different in some way. And it's like you could have two veterans. They literally serve side by side. And one will not be exactly like the other. It just, it won't happen. Uh, for those of you who live with a veteran and that, especially a combat veteran, and those of you, especially, most especially, this will go out to people that are looking at being, like, starting a relationship with a veteran, a combat veteran that deals with PTSD, talk with them. It's not so much as setting boundaries, but it's setting boundaries. Because you need to know the in and outs. You've got to find out what things that you can do around them that's not going to trigger them. And you need to, you need to understand what their triggers are as well. And for you veterans, so far from my experience, one of the best ways for you to deal with your PTSD is to find something that gives you purpose and pour your heart out into it. Simple as that. I don't know of any other way so far that things that you can do anything otherwise that, that really would, uh, would help without medication. But finding something, a hobby or whatever, you know, something that gives you purpose, period. Because that's what kept us going when we were in the service. We always had a purpose. Now that we're not in, we don't have a purpose anymore. We've, we've lost that purpose. So we've got to discover that again. So I challenge each and every one of you veterans out there that are struggling, find your purpose again. Even if it is, even if you have to try a hundred different hobbies, try a hundred different hobbies, find something that, find something that draws in that passion again, because that's, that's going to be the thing that helps you the most. Y'all be good. That's it for me today. And I hope to see y'all in the next one. Y'all be good.